Hey guys, I figured I'd make a quick video. Seems like everybody's interested in these new um, Oveready hosts that they came out with. These are unified P60 hosts. This one is referred to as the P20. I opted in for the um, their new tail cap with clip, um, the darker clip. And I have the new uh, dip P60 um, head that they have released with it so um, I figured I'd just kind of show you guys this um, real quick seems like there are a lot of questions um, how this works is you have to install the dip um, the dip head inside or through the top of the light instead of on the P60 the normal interface unscrews sort of right here they've shortened everything so everything comes in a smaller package so what you have to do and I've only done this once and I'm sorta of looking at my camera instead of uh, what I'm doing is you have to unscrew the bezel and uh, you'll need there should be a o-ring right below the bezel so there's an o-ring here what I have found is if I just sort of like move, uh, do this movement here, I can kind of get under it, but you have to get under it to get it out. Um, I did it with a toothpick the first time, so this is being a little bit more difficult. Here we go. All right, so you got to remove this, and that is your first O-ring that comes out. Then you've got your, you've got your lens lens pops out. You have another o-ring and then your reflector comes out. And so I know some people have asked me about this. So this is what the reflector looks like. And mine's a little dirty. I haven't cleaned it yet since I've messed with it. That's what that looks like. Set that back down. And then you have the actual drop in itself and that just falls right out. And then there's a copper spring washer in behind, behind it. So that's what this guy looks like. So here is everything in all its glory. They've done a pretty good job with this uh, aluminum housing and there are three dip switches if you see you've got switch one and then two on the side and three here or sorry two on the side and three here and what you do is the white line represents one and the side without a line represents zero so in order to change format or mode you would switch that switch over and it shows on their website what switch does what and what combination does what Right now I have this on low and high. And I, I believe there's like five or six different combinations that you can use, um, but this is the one that I have it on. And if you can tell here, switch one is on one, switch two is on one, and switch three is on zero. So that's what that combination uh, yields. So what they've done here is on a normal P60, it's all sort of encapsulated in one unit. What they've done, is they've moved this to two units, two different sort of um, pieces here so that they can actually um, use a bigger reflector. Um, so, or a, a lens, I guess you could call this. Anyway, so that's what they've done here. And uh, we'll just set these aside and then I will show you the host. So this new tail cap, I have one complaint about it. If you sort of let your fingers slip this way, it feels nice and smooth, everything's good. But if you go back this way, the knurling is extremely aggressive. It's, I mean, it's it's like sandpaper. Um, I, I don't know if that, if I just got an isolated incident here, if that's how they all are. But I've noticed when I clip this in my pants pocket to carry it, it is going to tear up my jeans extremely quick. Um, so I'm, I'm not a fan of that, but this could just be mine or 
um, there are a whole variety of tail caps to use. And so I have this tail cap, which is the natural a HA color that they, um, that they use, and this screws right on. Um, just like any of the other modular or surefire fire tail switches. They actually list it on the uh, the P20 page on over at his site. <clears throat> um, what tail caps fit, what size thread. But you do have to use the Zero Res tail switch, which all it is is just a brass insert that has a little button on it that makes contact with the battery instead of a spring. And so a lot of people are confused about that. Instead of having a clicky switch in here that has a spring that takes up pretty much the entire cap, and um, you, you lose a lot of room that way. So what this allows um, is more room for the battery. So this takes 18 350s. More room for the battery, so it shrinks the length down. So they have the... Um, their other host that they uh, came out with, which is the Z35, I believe is what they call it. Um, and it's a little longer, comes with a McClicky switch, uh, or you could use a zero res in it, but you'd have to have some sort of spacer or a longer battery instead of an 18350. They also make the 18650 version with the zero or with the McClicky switch. So anyway, this is the this is the body here. Go ahead and take this back off. Here's the body. It's one piece. It's got the double O-ring like Oveready is uh, known for, and there is an O-ring down here, and that's sort of for. See, mine's messed up, and it just fell out. Okay, so this sort of the battery fits in there, and kind of more of a dampening when the battery goes in there, and it relieves stress off the spring on your uh, drop-in because the this sits down in here on a lip so that fits down in there on this lip maybe there we go and then that o-ring will fit down inside of there on the back side of that lip the battery butts up against the o-ring so it gives just a little bit more room spring relief and um, it keeps metal from like this, the battery actually touching a metal surface on the back, or oh, sorry, on the top, on the button side, the positive side. So anyway, <clears throat> let's put this back together, and uh, I will show you um, the easiest way that I found to put this back together. Um, so I've got to put this O-ring back in here. Um, one thing I was worried about buying this was if um, if I would have to remove the P60 drop-in or the dip uh, drop-in every single time I wanted to change the dip switches. And I don't know if you saw just a minute ago, but that's not the case. So once this is installed, you can actually see the dip switches inside. I think this may be a little bit more difficult to do if you had the um, the host that holds the 18650 version uh, battery because what I do is either take, I have a little plastic spudger or a toothpick and you can just kind of, you know, from the battery side go in and select which dip switches you want, which combination. Um, so I was kind of, uh, wor not worried, but I was, you know, that was concerned. Um, turns out not to be an issue. Um, so what we need to remember is to put this copper spring washer in first. Set that down in there. Set your drop in down in there. And then you put your reflector, your lens on. Put an O-ring in. Put your lens in. And then you put the second o-ring in and so I have found it easiest to take my spudger or toothpick and just kind of just lightly push it down a couple threads because if not you don't, you don't want your um, you don't want this to be pinched at all when you put the bezel ring on so I'll put this down put your bezel ring on 
and make sure everything kind of feels right. It, you're not um, cross-threading anything or that any of the um, rubber washers are getting bent or tweaked or pinched. But And then a little tool from Oveready. Um, you just kind of give it a little snug. You can do this without the tool. It just that gives it like I can't remove it now by my hand. So um, you can do it without the tool and just kind of push it up against your palm and twist. Um, that's fine. Um, I like to use the tool. So anyway, again, they take 18 350s. Um, insert that into the tail. Positive side down. So we'll take this new tail cap that they have created. Actually, let's look at this tail cap real quick. Okay, so this clip is removable and you can sort of see where it mates up to the cap. And so I've got it on there finger tight so I can remove it this way. So it comes, uh, the inside of this cap is threaded, comes with this clip, and then comes with this ring. And so you can use it without the clip, just put this ring back or leave it off. Um, you will have a gap if you leave it off. That's as far as it threads. Um, or if you put it back, you'll have a cap, uh, gap. But um, again, some people are kind of confused about uh, about the zero res switch. So let me pull it out. Let me grab my. Um, I have a pair of snap ring pliers. And these work very good for doing this. But if you just sort of, you'll see, I'll show you when I pull this out. Um, there are two little indented circles that are in the bottom of this. You sort of need to put tweezers or a pair of snap ring pliers if you just happen to have those um, down in those little divots. And then just sort of unscrew it. And that's about it. Um, it should loosen up so you can just kind of put your finger in there and get it out. Okay. We'll go ahead and take a pair of tweezers and get this out the rest of the way. say that seems like these last couple threads a little tight okay here we go okay right, this is what the zero rest switch looks like it's just solid piece of brass this part goes up through the tail switch to make it look pretty that and then this side's got a little button machined out and you'll see the two little divot holes there that I've put the uh, snap ring pliers in to rotate but yeah that's really it um, nothing to it just sits down in there and then you um, want to make sure it's straight so go in reverse a couple times make sure the threads are not going to cross thread and then you'll should feel in the amp. There we go. The threads are lined up now. And then, this is why I don't like using tweezers to do that because I just bent my tweezers. So that's why I like something a little sturdier like snap ring pliers to uh, do the final torque on this uh, cap here because with the snap ring pliers they are not going to turn. All right, So that's bottomed out. That's done. Um, I do believe there is a o-ring down under that. Um, I forgot to look at that. Uh, maybe not. Maybe there's not. I can't remember. Anyway, so we'll put this clip back on here. One other question a lot of people seem to be having is does the clip touch the body? The answer is yes. Will it scratch it over time? That's sort of um, to be seen, but you can see sort of right, let's see here, 
there is this nice little line when I'm twisting the flashlight or twisting the tail cap to actually operate the light that that tail cap does make contact with the body and creates a wear line. Is that a big deal? It's up to you. Um, but your clip can be bent out if you don't like that. Completely up to you. Um, so this light is really neat. Um, I'm, I'm using an iPhone or I'd show you output shots, but this is low and that's high. Um, it has very, very good throw for an 18350 small, very small footprint pocket light. Um, I really, really like this light. I like this light better with no clip. I wasn't sure which option that I would like better, so I went ahead and got this tail cap with the clip. Um, I do like the um, older, this is called the Diamondback tail cap. I do like these better. I wish I had a black one. I'm in search of one. Um, the only thing is, you sort of get this gap here, um, which I'm going to fix when I get an O-ring from work. But I like this footprint better. Um, we'll look at dimensions on this real quick. Um, a lot of people seem to wonder what that is as well. So fully on, which is where the, the tail cap is um, threaded all the way. So the minimum length on this is going to be roughly... So it looks like it's going to be uh, 3 and 3 sixteenths inches long or is that... Looks like 78 millimeters um, for you guys and the rest of the world. Um, so that's with the Diamondback tail cap. Um, now with the tail cap that is supplied with the clip, it is looking a little bit longer. Um, that is because we have the clip installed and the top portion here but that is looking like turn that off just a little over three and a quarter um, inches so that looks like um, 83 millimeters um, so yeah that's your lengths of course, I'm, I don't know if anybody else cares about the other dimensions as far as width and everything, but you can sort of get an idea of how big this footprint is in my hand here. Um, I really like this light. They did a good job with the quality. Um, again, my only complaint is the aggressiveness on the knurling on the tail cap. It's only one way too, so I'm not sure if that was a, you know, like a, after they knurl it on the lathe, if they needed to sand it before they coated it and of course I could do that but then it would remove the finish and I don't eh, I don't really care enough to do that but yeah this is it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it's informative I hope it answered a couple questions that a couple of you guys have already asked me um, let me know if you need uh, anything else if you have any other questions I can uh, try to fill you in or I'm sure the guys from over ready would be more than happy to tell you um, thanks for watching